Hello and welcome back to another episode of the Process and Automation Podcast with the Automation Guys. Today's episode is again one of our most liked episodes. Today we have another interview special and usually you hear just Arno and me talking about all things process and automation but today we have another great guest here with us on the show someone who is as passionate about process and automation as we are it is with great pleasure to welcome Rob Crisp Rob is account executive at UiPath and wants more and more businesses to get the great benefits from automation hello Rob thank you for joining us today great to have you on the show Thanks, Sasha. Yeah, thanks for having me. Uh, great to be here. Great. So, yeah, Rob, please tell us a bit more about you and what you're doing at UiPath. Sure, sure. So uh, I'm relatively new to the company. Uh, I joined in January this year as an account executive for UK and Ireland. Um, I've worked in SaaS for the last four or five years, and basically my job is to be a kind of project manager of sorts uh, to help clients uncover automation potential in their company, connect them to the mm. right people, uh, and help them guide through their digital transformation. Uh, my main objective is demonstrating how robotic process automation can assist them with whatever priorities they may have at their company, uh, often surrounding efficiency drives, uh, freeing up more time for their employees, improving mm -hmm. customer experience, uh, and ultimately, ultimately maximizing uh, growth and profit. Wow, that sounds really good. So yeah, that's, that's exactly what uh, Arno and uh, I want to do as well for our customers. Perfect. So. Um, so the two of us um, are working with um, various intelligent automation vendors to support companies um, with, with yeah, pretty much all things process and automation. And uh, yeah, where do you see the sweet spot for UiPath in the market? Yeah, great question. Well, you know, firstly, let me start by saying that I'm in a very fortunate position uh, of working for the recognized market leader in uh, robotic process automation. Uh, now, UiPath has been a leader in every Gartner Magic Quadrant, Forrester Wave, and Everest Peak Matrix for RPA, uh, number one in all major independent user reviews sites for RPA, uh, including Gartner Peer Insights, uh, GS Crowd, Trust Radius, and Capterra as well, to name a few. Um, so, you know, what makes UiPath so beloved by its users? Well, I think traditionally automation is expected to work on its own from start to finish. Now that excludes a huge number of business processes that need human input. So UiPath allows you to interact and collaborate uh, with a digital workforce, massively opening up the automation potential in a cost-effective mm -hmm. manner through uh, attended automation. Mm -hmm. Uh, that's one of the reasons. Uh, another one of uh, of our major competitive edges is our unmatched AI. Uh, if you take document understanding, for example, uh, which combines RPA with our AI uh, to allow for end-to-end -end document processing. You know, whether it's AP invoices, uh, em employee applications, whatever, it can handle both structured and unstructured documents, mm -hmm. recognizing objects like tables and signatures check boxes uh, and, and even handwriting as well. So it's a massively useful tool. We, we also offer out of the box uh, drag and drop machine learning models that can be consumed by all organizations, mm -hmm. uh, large and small, at a fraction of the usual cost. Uh, setting up these models can, can take a matter of days or weeks compared to months or years that a traditional kind of in-house development might take. Now, the, the vastness of our of our interconnectivity as well is huge. Uh, essentially, we have integrations with almost all major enterprise products uh, who, by the way, some of whom have even built their own integrations uh, that you as a customer can download from a catalog, mm -hmm. massively speeding up your implementation. Uh, not to mention we have an open API and the ability to uh, invoke code as well. Wow, that and sounds we, very good. Yeah. Wow. So, so that sounds like quite an extreme competitive advantage. That sounds <laughs> yeah, there's a few. very, very, very comprehensive. Mm. Um, and, you know, between Sasha, Sasha and myself, of course, Rob, we, we talk a lot about actual use cases here on the podcast. Um, and my question to you is, um, you know, wh what do you think are the, the most exciting or impactful use cases that can be delivered using the UiPath platform? 
Yeah, that's a, that's a really interesting question. I mm-hmm. think, it, it, of course, it depends on, on a use-by-use use basis. Um, it varies a fair amount with each company and each department. Uh, but if we're talking about the most uh, you know, impactful use case. For, for me, it's 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 anything that is super repetitive, you know, super time consuming and super mind numbing. Um, usually companies immediately think of one or two use cases on the spot when you, you know, based on that criteria. Yeah. Uh, but so, some of the kind of common use cases that I've come across, uh, they often revolve around invoice processing, um, onboarding, offboarding staff, uh, anti-money laundering. Yeah. Uh, but but fun, fundamentally, it's it's whatever use case is going to have the biggest kind of return on investment for for your company. At least that's that's what that's what we recommend. Go for the low hanging fruit to start yeah, with. Yeah, I suppose there's there's sort of common, let's get started quickly use cases that you can deploy UI path with, and then by the sounds of it, any any potential problem in the business really that can uh, benefit from automation using a software bot. That sounds like a potential use case, right? Exactly, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Um, there's a whole plethora of use cases that it's, it, it just tends to be, uh, you know, what is it that your company's doing that's taking up a lot of time and, you know, just fo- focus your attention in those areas. Get or, if, if a robot can do it, why not let it do it, you know? Then, yeah. then it frees you up for more high value, uh, like, of work that you want to be doing. Yeah, indeed, yeah. Um, so intelligent automation, uh, hyper automation. So th- these were sort of the the buzzwords um, and in the recent years. Um, looking a bit into the future, where do you see things developing for companies uh, when it comes to to automation and process and automation? Yeah, no, I think um, I think UiPath is in a it, we're we're on the front line of of hyper automation or hi- hyper automation. You know, our whole company has, has one focus and it, it's automation, like hello, you guys. Uh, so we want to be the company and the tool that customers think of for all things automation. Uh, we don't mm. aim to replace like any kind of tech stacks that you're already using, uh, you know, far from it. We just want to be a layer that combines that tech stack, you know, intertwines with it, uh, intertwines throughout the enterprise itself, uh, allowing the company to kind of transform uh, their business and, and see massive returns. Mm. So you know, in terms of like next step, what, where, where, where is this kind of like, where the trend's going? Well, recently I've, I've heard the term semantic automation mentioned quite a lot. Uh, now I think this could be a really interesting area in terms of development in the automation space. Uh, we already know a lot about machine learning and AI, uh, but essentially semantic automation allows the robot itself to identify and improve the processes within an organization. Um, you know, so a, a good analogy would be to imagine an intern, an intern starts at a restaurant, you yep. know, mm-hmm. get, get, gets taught by the executive chef for all of the relevant tasks that they need to become a great chef. Uh, and then a year later, after becoming really good, gets promoted to sous chef. And then as a sous chef can create his own dishes and, you know, with minimal instructions and be an incredible, uh, like a, be a, a valuable asset uh, for the chef. So semantic automation is just like that. You know, it's it's the next frontier of automation, in my opinion. And you can imagine these robots, like the intern, the intern at the restaurant, uh, spending their time developing their own skills to master their craft, like automation. So, you know, I believe we're at a very exciting moment for intelligent automation, uh, both in general and at UiPath. Uh, and yeah. I'm super, super excited to see how it develops, you know, over, over the next few years. I feel very lucky. I think we're all very lucky yeah. uh, to ba- basically have a front row seat to watch it unfold. Yeah, it is yeah, great. Is, yeah. We, yeah. We, we do see a, a lot of these automation technologies coming through, and that sounds very, very interesting, um, mm. semantic automation. So, Rob, with all these innovative technologies available, we very often get a question from our listeners um, you know, w- what is your advice for companies getting started with digital transformation projects? Yeah, great question. Uh, this is a simple one. You know, come and talk to me. <laughs> uh, in, in, all, in all seriousness, uh, I believe RPA should be at the center of any company's digital transformation project. You know, uh, so I, I always recommend customers to do three things. Um, number one, uh, identify and select suitable use cases. Uh, this is key. Speak yeah. to your team, you know, your employees. Where are people having bottlenecks? Uh, UiPath also has a number of products that can help you during this discovery stage as well. Uh, we've got processes, uh, 
We've got software called Process Mining, uh, Task Mining, Automation Hub. These are all great tools for discovering automation potential. Um, step two, I would say uh, shortlist some suitable vendors that you get a good vibe from. Read some reviews, uh, speak to people and companies that you trust and research your vendors to see if you're going to be happy working with them like, long, long term. Uh, and then number three, I would say test drive those vendors. Uh, see who fits the company best. Uh, think of ease of use. Think of governance. Think implementation and think yeah. of scale as well. I think those are some key, key areas when, when, you, when you're talking about digital transformation. Oh, that's very cool. Thank you. Um, yeah, so that's uh, getting us nearly to our uh, sort of final sections. Um, so when we uh, have guests on, our listeners are uh, very keen to get to know more about our guests. Um, so a bit more than the technical and the business side. So what's... Um, no, no, we're not, not jumping straight into that question. So that's why we like to ask you a couple of quick questions, if that's okay. Of course, yeah. Happy to. All right. So they are a bit on the um, uh, yeah, this is a different side. So who is your idol and why? Okay, idol. You know, I've, I think I've got uh, I've got lots of idols, like in terms of uh, professional idols and personal idols and whatnot, and. Uh, people that have, have been so influential uh, in my life. Uh, but when I think of like, who's my idol, who, who have I got like a signed picture of in my, in my room <laughs> that I look up to, uh, yeah. I think I'd, 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 ha I'd have to say Alan Shearer uh, for that uh, Premier League, all time top scorer, <laughs> Newcastle United legend. Uh, yeah. I, I think, you know, the, the loyalty as well that Shearer showed, uh, going to Newcastle instead of like a Man United or Real Madrid or, or any other giant club was super inspirational for me. You know, I, I think uh, he taught me a lot about determination, about grit, and yeah. he was he, he was just an unbelievable player to, to watch as well. So, yeah, legend. Yeah, great. Well, it's always good to have somebody like that, and you always measure yourself against them. So, you know, absolutely. If I wake up in the morning, am I going to be? The Alan Sheeran. I'm, I'm going to be ending my day thinking, yep, I, I can stand in his footsteps. That's, uh, that's great. Um, another one for you, Rob, if I may. So imagine you can get all the contents and knowledge of a book instantly. Which book would you choose? Uh, you're right. Okay. Yeah. So I think, um, I reckon it would have to be Brewer's Dictionary of Phrases. Uh, have you heard of this one before? No. Uh, no. No, uh, it's basically it's basically this uh, this massive reference book, um, a bit like a cross between a dictionary and an encyclopedia. Mm -hmm. um, and I kind of I used to read it all the time when I was younger, just to to learn where a phrase came from or uh, where the origins of a certain word uh, might have might have developed. Um, actually, uh, I checked out robot. Uh, if I've got it in front of me here. I wrote it down. Um, the, the term robot. Would you, would you like to know where it came from? Oh, of course, yes. <laughs> so I've got here a uh, robot, uh, an automation with semi-human powers and intelligence. Uh, from this, the term is often extended to mean a person who works automatically without employing initiative. The name comes from the mechanical creatures in Karel Kapech, uh, Kapech play, R-U-R, -R, which stands for Rossum's Universal Robots, which was produced in London in 1923. So... Wow. Before, before the year 1923, no such thing as uh, as the word robot. Now it's all in our lives and running through, uh, well, yeah, it's keeping us all employed. Yeah, isn't it a, a robot for every human? Isn't that yeah. a, a UiPath slogan? Yeah, that's one of our, uh, that's another one of our differentiators there as well. Yeah. Competitive edges, it's a good one. Yeah. Great. Awesome, yeah. So um, the next one is, what's the best advice you have ever received? Well, I've, I've got a couple that stick with me. Uh, my dad always told me uh, it's nice to be nice. Uh, so that's a, a pretty straightforward mm. one. Um, doing nice things for people just genuinely makes you feel good. Um, I'm a big believer in karma as well. I think that a lot of the good things that have happened in my life uh, come from my good energy that I try to uh, put out into the universe and try to help people and it kind of ebbs and flows so yeah i also heard really good another really good piece of advice recently uh which was to change uh, to change your perspective every six months or so 
Um, so if you've got strong feelings about a topic, uh, you know, try and take a fresh look at it with different eyes. Um, I heard this quite recently and I've started doing it. Uh, and I think it allows you to create a bigger picture of something than what you had before, like a, a deeper understanding of a topic. I think it's quite a good thing to have, I think. Yeah, it's brilliant, um, yeah. And that was uh, that was our very own CEO Daniel Dines who uh, who told me that at UiPath. So he was, uh, yeah, he, he did a he did a presentation to our team uh, and thought it was excellent. Oh, amazing. Oh, wow. yeah. So I've got one more for you, Rob, if I may. Um, if you can be an Olympic athlete, what sport will you choose? Well, there's no chance of that happening anytime soon. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, but. If if I uh, if I had to choose, uh, I'd probably go for a um, maybe a combat sport. I think it's quite practical. Maybe you know, outside the Olympics, uh, should I need to defend myself? Uh, so <laughs> I think maybe something like uh, like judo or something like that. Uh, mm -hmm. I also I also did judo when I was a kid, actually, uh, when I was like ten years old. Uh, so I reckon I could pick it back up again pretty quickly. Maybe go for gold in Paris 24 in <laughs> two years' time. <laughs> we'll see. Yeah. Good. Maybe we have some RPA Olympics at some point. Yeah, that would be good. <laughs> uh, maybe we have a chance there. <laughs> yeah. Gets the robot. That's Amazing. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, th thanks a lot uh, for your time, uh, Rob. Um, so we, we came to the end of our um, uh, our questions. Um, so uh, our listeners, um, I'm, I'm very sure, uh, would be very keen to know how to reach out to you. Um, and what would be the best way to, to get in touch with you? I'm all. I'm always responding to people uh, on on LinkedIn. Uh, so you can you can find me at uh, LinkedIn.com slash uh, Rob underscore crisp um you can also send me uh, an email uh, to robert.crisp at uipath.com mm -hmm. uh, and I'm more than happy to uh, to have a conversation have, have a discussion around around automation or if, if even if someone just wants to learn more about about uipath or uh, some of the products more than happy to help fantastic yeah we will put all these things in in the show notes yeah, it was a real pleasure to have you on the show. Um, yeah, and um, if you want, um, yeah, let us know, and then we bring you back uh, for for another part two episode. Awesome! Thanks, thanks for having me, guys. I really appreciate it, and uh, now keep up the good work. I'm a big fan of the podcast. So, yeah, thanks, Rob. Appreciate it. Of course. Thank you. Unfortunately, that's it again with this episode of the Process and Automation podcast. If you like this episode, please give us a five-star rating and don't forget to subscribe to this podcast so you don't miss any upcoming episode. We hope you will tune in next time and until then, let's automate it.